John, we got to start with Carl Icahn because is he a distraction or an agent of positive change for Apple? Because it's at a pretty critical moment here. Well, I think Apple is in much better shape than anyone's giving it credit for. Uh, I was on this show, uh, Tom, last April when Apple stock fell below $400, and I said, people just don't understand how strong this company is. And then it got up to $550. I think it's going to be right back up there again. Uh, the situation they have now is that uh, they're just beginning the rollout in China. There are only 16 cities in China with uh, LTE, long-term evolution 4G, and there'll be 300 by the end of the year. So Apple is being way, way, you know, I think overreacted to by investors. And actually, it's a positive that Carl Icahn just went out and bought more stock. Okay, so how does it get to that $500, $500 uh, price level for its shares? Does the company move beyond uh, focusing on a few key products and really look outside its comfort zone for acquisitions to beef up its product line? Does it return that cash to shareholders? What gets it there? Well, I think, uh, first of all, I, th I think it will work its way back up again uh, just on the performance of, of the business. Tim Cook has said they're going to have some big announcements this year. If I were going to bet on something, I would bet on mobile payments. Uh, mobile payments can really turn out to be one of the, the hottest new areas, and they have right. 600 million registered users on iTunes that they could convert into mobile payments. We're honored to have you two here, two blue chip quality executives running blue chip companies, Pepsi, Apple, and Kellogg's. Here's the distinction. Kellogg's, free cash flow, about $1.1 billion. Apple, free cash flow. Take a guess. Kellogg's, $1.1 billion. I would have said 10, 12. Apple, $41 billion. 1.1 billion at Kellogg's versus 41 billion at Apple. I'm sorry, it's a cash juggernaut. Is this just Tim Cook having trouble becoming like Carlos Gutierrez or frankly like John Scully? Well, I believe that uh, Apple is not valued as a growth company. It's valued eight times cash. And so uh, I think Tim Cook is being compared to Steve Jobs. He's yes. never pretended he's Steve Jobs. And this is a company that has an incredibly loyal user base, it just generates cash, and it's really misunderstood by investors. How, how often do they need a new innovation? I mean, is it in this market where everything's so fast, is it nine months, is it 18, 12? Well, here's the thing that's uh, surprising, uh, Carlos, is that uh, Steve Jobs would have a new innovation about every six years. And now people are saying, hey, Tim Cook, you know, you've got to have one every two years. Well, that's not realistic. Or six uh, months. So should it be considered still a growth stock when you not only have a repl replacement cycle, say, three years now versus just six, seven months, and you also have sort of a slower rollout uh, of some of the products, they're just not as sexy anymore. I mean, is it growth? Well, it's not really a growth stock, and it's not valued as a growth stock. It's valued but, but should as it be? a cash I guess machine my question. with right. wonderful products and a loyal user base. Uh, it could be a growth stock, again, if it had a new breakout area. My bet would be on something like mobile payments because it's going to be so, so mm -hmm. big. One of the distinctions of the quarter was that uh, Apple did not sell enough 5Cs, the lower-end phone. The need for a lower-priced product remains if Apple wants to expand its user base. How does a premium brand expand to a broader customer base without diluting its brand and offending its core customer? Well, I think the 5C was a product that was mispriced. I mean, uh, companies make mistakes. Should it have been lower, yeah. then? Well, it, been lower. It, it was old technology, you know, the old processor, only $100 less. Uh, you could trade in your old, you know, four right. Uh, right. Apple uh, iPhone four, and you could get, you know, several hundred dollars for that. It just wasn't well uh, thought through as a price. Uh, I, so should Apple uh, try try again with that? I don't know. That's uh, you know, a level of detail I'm not involved with. Well, okay, I want to get to a level of detail. Doug Cass of, of CB's Partners. I'm sorry, uh, Carlos, he said General Mills with a call option and not Kellogg's yeah, I, I, with a call option. Yeah. That's criminal. But, but the idea here of, again, migrating to a quality, stodgier company, I, I'm going to suggest, John Scully, that they're going to fight kicking and screaming across all of Silicon Valley to be responsible executives and return cash to shareholders. When do you see what Carl Icahn wants occurring? Well, Five years? I said uh, some months ago that, that, that I thought uh, one thing Apple could do, it would be totally contrary to the culture of the company, so it's highly unlikely it would ever happen. But with $150 billion of cash, why not go out and buy eBay? Uh, eBay is a really well-managed company. It would leverage into uh, a lot of the assets. At this point, just buy PayPal. <laughs> well, I PayPal, mean, yeah, but it's part of eBay. And you've talked about the money, the, the money transactions, where Apple gets into a whole new business yeah. with eBay. On oh, say this again. 
Well, I, I think it's highly unlikely because it's not Apple's culture to make you know, large acquisitions. But I'm saying that, that eBay, in my opinion, would be a great fit for Apple. Well, maybe they can get there another way and they can, they can actually go build something like that because they have a tremendous position in mobile, which eBay doesn't have uh, compared to Apple. Uh, and they have this huge install base of um, registered users. Do they become a bank? Well, they sort of are a bank, aren't they? I mean, uh, when you're turning out cash the way they are, any bank would love to have the Apple yeah. wallet. So doesn't that wind up meaning mm -hmm. that using the money for a buyback is a waste of cash? I just don't think buybacks are. Uh, I mean, they're already doing $60 billion of a buyback. Sort of I don't think that's a great strategy. Icon. No, I, I don't think that's a great strategy. Aside from bolstering the EPS. It hasn't really worked for the semiconductors either. You haven't seen that right Should we just go all day here and have an executive seminar with Carlos Gutierrez and John Scully? Yeah, they're schooling us right now. Do we all have iPhones here? I'm just curious. You know what? What I don't get is how they're getting away with this typing. I mean, someone needs to come up with something where you can actually type on a phone. Does that mean you have a you had it. They're gone. Can I explain this to you, Mr. Secretary? You're a fossil. Okay. Here's the way it works. You and I are like, we're hopeless. I, my thumbs are years, too big. Those 10 years younger than us do this. They and do the kids are like this. Guys. And they make no yeah, mistakes. Yeah, my thumbs are too big. They do it's this thing. But you, you, you need Siri, who you can talk into. Oh, I know. Yeah, yeah that's, I haven't tried that yet. It's a magnifying glass. Yeah. Stylus big thumbs. Uh, but did you have a BlackBerry then, Carlos? I have an, an iPhone and a BlackBerry. Ah, dual citizenship. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I, I have to admit, you know, I got one of these. Is that a BlackBerry? <laughs> John Scully <laughs> carrying a BlackBerry. <laughs> you know? A break exclusive. It's a break exclusive. John <laughs> Scully, put that up again. Yeah. We're to, oh, we're, we're told in the control room enough of this. John, John Scully, Scully with his BlackBerry. With a Blackberry. All right.